Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how we can take out images from within Blender and then edit them in an external editor and then have them update within Blender seamlessly or with the click of a button. This tool is really useful for texture painting, especially on more simplistic UV unwraps. However, it can be used and utilized in a whole manner of different ways. I know I use it a lot for my comic, a lot of which has been created using Blender. So here's an example of a page, and this page I'm going to be, uh, well, messing up in this example to give you a rundown of how this feature works. So sit back and relax, and I hope that you enjoy. Welcome back. So to begin with, we're going to set up the path for our external image editor. To do this, all that we'll have to do is come up here to edit and come down to preferences. Then we're going to find the file path section of our preferences and come down to the application drop down menu. And then within that, you'll see something called image editor. From here, we'll then set that image editor to the executable of the image editor. So if you're using Photoshop, you would set it to the photoshop.exe. Uh, for this example, I'm using critter.exe. So for those of you who do not know what Critter is, Critter is an open source alternative to Photoshop. And in my opinion, it is a far more, uh, far more professional alternative to GIMP, which has a bit of an aged look about it. So, once you've set your image editor's path up, you just wanna come down to this button here and save preferences. That's just gonna make sure that it saves the image path. Now that you've set that up, all that we really have to do to edit our image within the image editor of our choice is we're gonna load up the image. So I'm gonna load up my chapter page four, and then I'm just gonna click on this little icon here and go to image. And then if we come up here, you'll see a little button that you may have already seen a few other times, but never really looked at it, uh, edit externally. So once we click this button, it's gonna load up a new critter page and it's gonna load that image into it. From there, we're able to make some edits to the image then have them be reflected directly within Blender. So let's get started and I'll show you. I'm just gonna split the page. Let's say I wanted to create some black bars for whatever reason over his eyes. There, excellent edit. Uh, and for those of you who are wondering, this comic is not yet available for release yet, although you can subscribe to my website at foulsonfantasy.com forward slash the Legion of Fire. I cannot wait to show you this uh, comic. But back to the tutorial. So after I've made my edit, I'm then gonna save the change and after that's saved, if I come back to Blender, you see it hasn't really changed yet. Well, if I hover over my image editor tool and press Alt-R, you'll see that it auto reloads the image so that it is now updated within our viewport and within the image editor itself. So I can make numerous changes to this image So once you've made your changes, you're gonna to wanna to save your image. So always remember, you have to save your image within the external editor. And then you're just coming over here. Once the save is complete, and it will give you a little notification, you can press Alt-R and voila. This is a great way to make small minute changes to different objects. So if I wanted to change the text within these text boxes, I now can do that quite simply. So once we've made our edit, always remember, save the PNG. And then once it's saved, so we've got our saving document at 0%, that should jump up to 100%. So once that's saved, you can press Alt-R and you should see that our text has updated to Y Captain. So really, really, really useful for texturing and a bit of an unknown function of Blender. So I hope that this tutorial has uh, given you some insight to the flexibility that you have with your texturing workflow. You can use your favorite 
tools such as Photoshop, Critter, GIMP, whatever you like. And then you can have those changes update automatically within Blender. I hope that this has given you a bit of insight. I hope that you've enjoyed the tutorial and I hope that you've learned something. If you have, be sure to smash that like button and consider subscribing to this channel for more software tutorials. Also, if you'd like, you can head over to my website at foulsonfantasy.com where you can find tutorials like this and a whole lot more. Give me a rundown of what you think of the website. I've been working on it for quite a long time now and it's only just starting to take shape. Thank you so much for watching. This is Hayden Fowles from foulsonfantasy.com, signing off.